let's have a talk. How you doing? No, come on, this is for my video. Are you, how you, no, you can't stay there. How you doing? No, don't get up. We're having a talk for the video. How you doing? You doing okay? This is Chester. He's my little screamy meme cat. Like when he was little, he he sounded just like he's screaming right. <laughs> Why are you fighting with me? Come here. No, I want to talk to you. Come here. Hi. You doing okay? Are you doing all right? Do you do you want do you want do you want treat? Do you want treat? He wants catnip treat. No way, really? Are you sure? You want catnip treat? I think you want catnip treat. I do. I came out here to cut some lemongrass, which is right here. That's where I cut away some for some soup I'm making. And I noticed, finally, I get to see these flowers. Um, this is a three-lobed false mallow plant. Now, why they call it a, a false mallow, I don't know. <laughs> but it, it doesn't have leaves like a typical mallow. There's so many varieties of mallow. So, yeah, it, totally different from that. And why they even... Now, the flowers are similar. Maybe that's why. But I found out that you can make a tincture from this plant and it heals uh, skin issues and I have only found one thing that works nearly as good as this and that is um, Sangre de Grotto which is dragon's blood you can get that on Amazon you cannot get this on Amazon um, this came up in my yard just randomly and I never pull any weeds unless this is concerning to me a little bit this is a parasite um, these parasites actually get inside of the leaves and they have just attacked and attacked and attacked my kaffir lime I'm thinking about cutting this whole branch off because it's nowhere else on here yet but they are so very invasive I mean they just will not once they get their hooks into something, they will not leave it alone. And it hasn't actually killed my kaffir lime plant yet, but I mean, it can't be doing it any good because it is just getting really attacked this year. And everything that I put on it, kill to kill the parasites, like you know, like neem oil, it will also kill all the leaves. You know, and the leaves grow back, but I mean, what's the point of having a plant? where parasites attack it constantly and you can't do anything about it. Now this, I don't know if this will keep happening because these parasites actually started getting inside of some bean plants I had out back before and then they stopped almost like it was not inhabitable for them. So maybe that'll happen here too. But I think these are very pretty and I love this plant. I made a tincture out of it using um, alcohol. You just soak the leaves in alcohol. You can see here a little flower bud there. And I collected some seeds. I'm actually sending somebody some of them tomorrow because this is such, it's so healing. It's its unbelievable. It's, it's such a powerful plant. Here's, here's one of the, excuse me, I gotta get an ant off of me. Okay. Here's one of the, the seed heads right here. I, I showed these in another video. They kind of look like a little, and I'm sorry I have dirt under my fingernails, but I've been working outside for hours now. And usually I just clip my fingernails completely down and scrub my hands when I finally do go in the house because there's no point of trying to keep nailed the things I do. And so I just want you to see this because I think it's absolutely... It's a Mustang. That's a cool car. Um, but yeah, this is just absolutely beautiful, I think. And it's a wild plant. It just showed up here. So basically a bird just deposited this here for me and it was a nice gift, a very nice gift because I've never seen anything work on skin wounds and 
it it works on all sorts of things it'll it'll cure uh, any skin ailment and now I don't know if it's non-toxic as far as pets but the other stuff that I was talking about the Sangre de Grado is it's it's non-toxic for uh, dogs and cats and you can use it and it's it works just about as good but it does it's I don't think it just I'd say it's number two to this just put it that way this stuff is amazing and I also made a salve out of it with a uh, olive oil and beeswax okay so I'm spoiled again somebody sent me this it's a six book series by Jean all I think that's how that's similar to my last name but <laughs> and I still haven't figured out how to say it um, but it's the Earth's Children series. Earth's Children. Earth's Children. I can't say that. Earth's Children. I'm li a lisping or something. I don't know. But, um, the Clan of the Cave Bear, the Valley of Horses, the Mammoth Hunters, the Plains of Passage, the Shelters of Stone, the Land of Painted Caves. It's really funny because just this morning I was reading about hunter-gatherers and that they're doing um, basic, basically like isotope tests and um, more extensive tests, you know, trying to find, you know, their heritage on any remains that they have found, like in South Africa. And that's kind of interesting, but it's, this sounds like a nice break from the seriousness of this year. This, this is fiction. I don't usually read fiction, but seriously, this sounds remarkable. I was reading the, dis this is sealed in plastic, but I was reading the description on the one end of this, this book here. And I was like, oh, that sounds like something I'm really going to like. So thank you, you know who you are. So this is some of my broth I made. Um, there's a chicken in there. And I have these uh, dandelion and stinging nettle tea bags, even though I have dandelion and stinging nettle outside. But I had already bought these before I planted those. And I add that into my broth. And those are my last tea bags and I probably won't buy any more because I've been drying it. So. That they were some organic tea bags I got somewhere but uh, I'm gonna make some soup out of this broth I, I gotta strain it first strain all these veggies off and stuff and get the chicken out of there and but that's what I was outside picking the lemongrass for because I figured out something about my lemongrass I thought that you only could use the very bottom of the plant as far as the meat of the plant goes now the grass part of it you can make tea out of or whatever you can make it makes great incense too i'll tell you that right now um or smudge sticks um i don't know if you all know what a smudge stick is but um but i like just burning them because they smell good I'm, i don't exactly practice all that hoodoo voodoo stuff but uh they, they smell really good and so I made some out of uh, lavender and lemongrass before and I think I have one left and man I'm really gonna miss them when they're gone I gotta order some more lavender because you can't grow lavender here unless it's Spanish lavender it'll grow for a while but even it dies in the heat but that's the only kind I've been able to get to grow here but just regular lavender it's too hot here for it so if I want lavender I have to order it and lavender smells so good to me or I could also order some just oil, but that probably wouldn't burn very good. I mean, it would in an oil burner, but I mean, as far as on a smudge stick, that wouldn't be a good idea. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, but anyways, um, you know, the, I thought that you could only use the bottom of the plant. And I found out that there is like quite a bit of meat inside the the thicker part of the grass that you can still use but you really got to cut into the to the blade to get it out of there and so you know I've, I've been able to use a lot more of it um, since I figured that out and here's here's some of the stuff I just cut 
outside. You know, and I gotta, you know, you peel away those outer layers and as soon as you get to the middle, like you can't bend it hardly at all. But once you get towards the middle, you you begin to be able to bend it and that's the edible part when, when it's tender enough so you can bend it around. You know, so it's kind of cool, you know, and I mean, so now I feel like I have so much more than I thought I did. And then, um, also I read today, because, you know, I was wondering about freezing it, because I have, I like to freeze stuff, you know, to keep it for, like, Thanksgiving and stuff, which is coming up. I'm so excited. Um, but, uh, you can, you can freeze it, you can just cut it and freeze it, but you can also, uh, make little ice cubes with it just like I did before. I don't know if I made a video about that with the aloe vera. I uh, harvested a bunch of my aloe vera out there and made ice cubes with it. Those really came in handy like especially one time I got really sunburned and I just kept taking them out of the freezer and just rubbing them all over me because it felt so good. That night I woke up in the middle of the night just Stinging horribly like I got so burnt and I hurt I was so burnt my shoulder blades like hurt like bad and I couldn't even go back to sleep and actually the aloe vera stuff did not help what finally helped was I smooth out got in a bathtub full of olive oil and hot water well actually lukewarm water because it's hot water would have thrown me into cardiac arrest that night because I was so burnt but yeah, it, right away that olive oil alleviated that sunburn and it turned into a tan just like in minutes. So, but anyways, that's what I'm doing. Making my old broth like usual and boy does it smell good in here. And I made the cats and Dolly um, some chicken livers. They had like a whole bucket of them for $1.69 at the store. So I made them for them and made this for me and... I've just been, you know, just kind of having fun. That's all.